November 12th is called to order. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda, and we want to remove item 8F, Superintendent Search Committee. There will be no report tonight. And add 10D, a co-curricular position. Are there any other changes or adjustments to the agenda? The next item is the approval of the October 8th school board minutes. Charlie? On the October 1996 meetings, 10C, um, the policy speech at the Bay Coordinator, I don't think that's correct yet. I don't think that's his position. It's Michael Efren. I'm not sure. Do you know Rick? That he, he's not a debate coordinator. We went through this discussion the last meeting. There are three positions in speech and debate. They are divided up in that the idea that um, both Dwight Ely and Sarah would, would take the co-sponsorship as far as the running of that. So you're absolutely right. He's not, I, I didn't look at the, uh, the uh, specific writing of that. It says policy, policy slash speech and debate coordinator. Policy, That's not his he'll position. He'll be one of the debate coaches. He'll be teaching policy. And then LD will be um, Dwight Ely, and then speech would be Sarah Frank. Right. Can you get that to, yeah, to Mary? Yeah. Yeah. Thank it'll you. It'll get corrected in a minute. Okay. Any others? Um, George? Beth, on, on 9D, uh, the discussion of the grade 11 class size and the request for the additional section of, of English um, at the very end. Um, it, it basically s states that uh, three voted against the motion, uh, Dransfield, Entwistle, and Witherell. And um, I just think it should be noted that, I, um, that Entwistle and Dransfield were actually supporting a position to provide an, an additional section for the duration of the school year. Um, in some ways, it, the, uh, the uh, our notes as they're reflected um, look as though we were not at all in support of the of the motion. I think we were actually pushing to get um, support for the full full school year, not just for the uh, two middle quarters. I, am I correct, Gail? I think so, but there was no motion made to that that was then turned down, and we usually don't put in all of the ins and out of people's positions in the minutes um, in reflecting actually everybody's positions. I don't know. Can he just make a statement that he wants to go on record, record as, as supporting? Yes. Right. Okay. That's okay. fine. So. So, Mary, do you have that? Thank you. Would you like to be on that? Great. That they supported that position for the full year. Are there any other changes? Thank you. Then the minutes stand approved. The next item on the agenda is comments by high school and middle school reps. Why don't we, middle school reps first. <clears throat> I'm Katie D and I'm a middle school representative. Um, the first thing is the fifth grade primary elections are tomorrow and the final elections will be November 19th. Also the fifth and sixth grade social has been postponed to November 22nd because of the high school gym is the floor is being redone. Um, also, the first girls basketball um, game will be at Cape Elizabeth on November 15th against Forum. And also, the trip to Boston that the eighth graders took last Friday was a success. We want to thank all teachers and parents who helped chaperone. I'm Caitlin Wendell, I'm the other school board rep, and we will begin the sweatshirt sale soon. We've picked out 10 items. 
and some are things like flannels and fleeces and warm-up suits and there are a lot of other things and um, the order form will be going home tomorrow and there's going to be a 7th and 8th grade dance December 13th and um, WMGX is sponsoring the food drive and students are to bring in non-perishable items and there's also um, a comment box for students who want to make comments on the student council and if they like to do that they can just drop them in it's by the front office thank you are there any questions thank you high school rep Hi, I'm Matt Lunt, and Ryan Kane couldn't be here tonight. Um, but in the past month, uh, it's been pretty big for sports. It's been, uh, there have been a lot of playoffs and field hockey. Uh, the girls made it to the Western Maine Championships, um, but they were eliminated there. Uh, boys and girls cross country placed second and third in their state meets, respectively, uh, which was two weeks ago. And this weekend, last weekend, uh, the boys and girls soccer had their state championships at Gorham against Brunswick and they both won um, one to nothing against Brunswick. Uh, in drama, the tryouts for the play, which will be the dining room, uh, occurred Wednesday of last week and it has since been cast and the rehearsals will start Thursday of this week and will go on up until uh, the performances, which will be in January. Um, see, the last three weekends, the speech and debate has also done well in their three meets, their first three meets. That's about it. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Um, the next item on the agenda is communications. And I just wanted to, again, congratulate the teams. The field hockey team was the runner-up in the Western Maine Class B Finals. The varsity boys and girls soccer teams obviously won yesterday, Class A. In cross country, the boys were the won the Western Maine, and they were runners-up in the state. And the girls were runners-up for the Western Maine and third in the states. And the golf was the Western Maine runner-ups. So all of the teams did very well. Other communications? Then the next item is the superintendent's report. Right. Cynthia. The first item is uh, regarding an exchange teacher from Archangel Russia. I know Nancy has talked extensively with them. A particular person wants to come and be at Pond Cove is uh, very fluent in English. And we're looking forward to that person participating with us. I don't know whether Nancy, whether you want to say anything more about it. Or Tom? I, I think it's explanatory, um, and it seems like a good opportunity to for the system. Great question, yeah. Could, would you explain how this person would be utilized, assigned to one teacher, or work across grade levels, or how do you see this happening? And, and while she's coming up, it says exchange, but we don't have someone going at this point in time. So there are people from the Portland area going, but we don't have someone going. I spoke with Gail Pelletier probably two weeks ago and asked her to contact Cynthia's office, and um, then she called me back and we had another conversation. What we're intending to do is to have her uh, visit several classrooms. We have some youngsters in Pond Cove who are, who are fluent in Russian, and we see it as a real opportunity to give them the support that they need in their transitioning and to offer this young person support in her um, chosen profession. But every child would be exposed. Absolutely, yeah. Give her, I, I really would see her u doing a lot of things within Pond Cove, not being assigned to one classroom, for example, for three months or four months or whatever. Would she live in Cape Elizabeth? Yes. I don't know exactly where she'll be located, but Gail is responsible for her housing and for looking after her. So our community really is hosting her, not just as an exchange teacher, but as a, an experience. That's right. Oh, that would be good. Thank you. We'll have two exchange teachers. 
yes. in our system. Yes, we will. Nancy, um, is she a student teacher or a teacher? It's she would be uh, finishing out her college year, and as I understand it, according to the letter and according to what Gail has said, she's looking for this experience to just have some understanding of American education and to do some comparison in her learning in regard to Russian education. So the answer is, I believe she's sort of finishing out her year. This is not her student, you know, we have that requirement for pre-service teachers here. And I think she's completing that and trying to use some of this for information for herself. Thank you, Nancy. Any other questions? We have Kevin Sweeney from the Cape Coalition here this evening who's going to talk with the board about a serious issue. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me some time on your agenda tonight. Several months ago, the Cape Coalition began looking into the issue of nitrous oxide abuse in the Cape Elizabeth community. As you may or may not be aware, uh, young people are using uh, aerosol whipped cream and inhaling the gases from that. And they are also able to purchase at several stores in the greater Portland area small nitrous oxide canisters. I wish I had a few with me. But uh, they're able to purchase them at almost any store. And they are using the contents to uh, get high. Uh, clearly a concern. However, as we began investigating this, we discovered that this was a far more encompassing problem than just nitrous oxide and whipped cream. We have discovered that young people across the United States are huffing, which is the street term they use, gasoline, freon, cooking sprays, nail polish removers, whiteouts, magic markers, and a wide, wide variety of products. It's entry-level substance abuse. This is often beginning in the elementary schools towards the third and fourth grade, continuing on into the middle school. We know we have a problem, uh, albeit not knowing how much of a problem in Cape Elizabeth. The end of August, we had three incidents reported in the Cape Coria. The first incident was the recovery of 23 nitrous oxide canisters after a party. Second incident was several days later when a resident reported strange slash suspicious behavior on the part of young people that was accompanied by the recovery of spent nitrous oxide canisters. The third incident was uh, the arrest of three juveniles in the Kettle Cove area who had a car full of marijuana, bongs, other drug paraphernalia, as well as nitrous oxide, balloons, and the other tools necessary to use nitrous oxide. When we've taken a look at all the other products that are involved, we've definitely expanded the scope of what we are trying to do. We feel that since clearly the young people in Portland know about nitrous oxide and other inhalants, that it's time that we educate the parents. Because it's been clear from my conversation with parents and teachers as well, that they don't have a clue as to what's going on, at least regarding this. Uh, most of the attention is directed towards alcohol, marijuana, crack, and other more dangerous drugs. I say other more dangerous drugs somewhat facetiously since whiteout, as you'll see from your packets, can stop a child's heart. So can many of the other products that, these pe that our young people are using. On December 5th, we will be sponsoring a community education and awareness program directed principally towards the parents and our teachers. The idea is to convey to them the information that they will need to identify and perhaps intervene when and where necessary with inhalant abuse. But that's only the first step of what we are attempting to do. We have also begun to write legislation, which Jane Amaro and Jean Jen Marvin are, will be sponsoring for us. It will address the issue of nitrous oxide it will, uh, specifically, and it will also address the issue of other inhalants and their use. We do not want to be punitive with our young people. We do want to be very punitive with the people who provide them with the products because we are quite certain that they know what the nitrous oxide is for and it is not for whipped cream. In addition, we are trying to get this to become a statewide effort because it's clear that the problem goes on throughout the state. I have spoken with the DARE, almost every DARE officer in the, in the greater Portland area. Everyone acknowledges that it's an issue, but they don't know what to do with it. 
The problem is it's not illegal. They don't report on it. I have spoken to teachers and nurses, and I have learned that as long as five years ago, we were seeing young people with permanent brain damage, permanent psychosis as a result of this. What we are recommending is that when we teach our young people responsibility about drugs, that we also have to begin to reteach the adults, the parents, the school community, so that we can all come together and protect these kids. I'd like to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to try and answer them. Thank you, Kevin. I know that the Pond Cove Parents Association has changed their meeting yes, to they be have. your meeting. Yes, which, we're very pleased. And I was at the Middle School Parents Association meeting, and they were going to try to do a big push to get a lot of people out for this. It's a wonderful opportunity for parents, and just the way you know, we should be going with yes. parent education and things. And thank you. Thank you. Other I would also. Oh, go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. Did you say you had one of those canisters with you? No, I, I was trying to get a hold of one. Uh, I didn't get time at my lunch break to get over to the store. They but they, they look like uh, CO2 canisters that you would use with a BB gun. Are you familiar with those? No, They're kind of small, very shiny. As a matter of fact, my son was finding these on the trails in Cape Elizabeth two years ago, and I assumed that he had a BB gun hidden around somewhere, and I... Uh, beat him about the head and shoulders over that issue. Uh, he just was picking them up on the trails and bringing them home to use on his B-17 models. Are there other questions? No, really, I might, I just you. would like to thank Nancy Hutton and Rick DeFusco. They've been extraordinarily supportive on this. Thank you for your time. Great, thank you. Thank you. Go on. Uh, I'm going to skip test results because I don't think Lyle is here yet. He thought he might not be here until 8. So I'll move on to the MSMA conference that Dale and Charlie attended. And I've sort of put them on the spot in terms of sharing some information with me. Oh, I'll, go, I'll go first. Um, this was my third year that I attended this conference in October um, and rode up with Charlie this year. Most often we rode up with Connie also. Uh, and I think this was our, our best conference, at least for me, it was, was the most informative. The um, keynote speaker was Governor King and Duke Albanese, the um, new Commissioner of Education for Maine. And I have to tell you that I thought Governor King was a very uh, engaging speaker and had us right there. Uh, the conference was um, Education, Families, count. And I attended three seminars, I'll tell you. The one was an overview of the main learning results. The second one was on current special ed legal issues and contracts. And the third was on liability checks for hiring and background checks policy making. So those were my three that were very, very helpful. Um, I attended um, three workshops and also was your delegate to the Maine School Board Association Assembly. Um, I, the first one I attended was student safety versus student rights. It's current safety issues in Maine schools, and that was given by Bruce Smith, who is um, an attorney with the law firm that we employ. Um, the second one I also attended with Gail was keeping up with the world of special education, which I felt very insightful. Listed some um, some cases that are out there that could have impact, you know, on a lot of things that are going on in special ed. And the third one I attended was Maine's learning results, who's responsible for what. And it actually was given by, um, or, uh, it was Richard Card, who's an associate professor at the University of Southern Maine, and representatives from MSAD number 72, which is around the Freiburg area and was how they went about um, a process which is ongoing of adapting and really looking at their curriculum and how and what is going on in their system in relationship to the learning results. And I have some, some information and some handouts which I'm going to have, um, I'm going to forward on to the superintendent's office to share with us all. Um, they were used, uh, MSAD 
72 was actually using a half day every Wednesday for this process. And uh, I found it very effective of how they went about in their approach. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions? No. Cynthia, should we come back to the yes. test results? Go I on. just had one other item on the superintendent's report. We've been notified that Zach Hornby, who is a student at Cape Elizabeth High School, um, is one of the 15 top students in Maine uh, for the Maine testing program, and he'll be on it at a reception at the Blaine House in a few weeks. So we were quite pleased. Yes, congratulations to him. Uh, principal's reports, high school. Rick, you're up first. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, first of all, as you, we've already congratulated the soccer teams. It was a great day yesterday. But I also wanted to, to thank and, and uh, recognize the parents and the, and the students that were there. It was a real great day out at Gorham. Tremendous support, real positive support for our teams. And I also want to thank the drum team that we established yesterday that kept at it for uh, well over three hours. It was a great day for Cape High School. And uh, for those of you who may have seen parts of the news or attended, it, it, it uh, really recognized our kids for their outstanding work. Um, also, I just want to mention that report cards will be going out tomorrow at the high school. We'll be distributing them during the last period of the day. The quarter ended the first, grades were put, turned in. We've put them on the computer, so they will be distributed tomorrow. Also, the high school administration uh, has hosted two meetings with, with parents from the high school. Uh, this is an attempt, as, as I had mentioned earlier, for a parents' assistance team to, to kind of bridge the communication between the high school and, and the, the parent community. And again, I, to set the record straight, this is uh, an adjunct to, say, the parents' association. Th these particular groups are parents from each, from each class. So the idea to, for, to have representation of ninth grade parents with the high school to talk about issues and programs concerning ninth graders and ninth graders alone. Likewise with sophomores, juniors, and seniors. In the course of the two meetings, we've had 30 parents and students attend the meetings. And we're planning some strategies for uh, throughout the year. Um, each group will be meeting individually now. And then we'll have a, a collective meeting again in February to discuss uh, our future as a committee. I was real pleased with the input, and I will be giving a report uh, to the board uh, after the two meetings and give you some feedback as to how those meetings went and where our direction is going. But I thought it was very positive, and already some, some real uh, positive things and, and communication has happened between the two. Uh, our Needy Family Project is in process, and for the new board members, this is the sixth year w in which our students donate food and, and and in some cases, toys and clothing to needy families in Portland through the YWCA. This was started six years, six years ago uh, by one student. Uh, and since that time, each class takes it on. And it's kind of a competition within the school, which of the classes can bring in the most food and, and, uh, and uh, things for, for these families. And the chair. Uh, persons this year, chair people this year are Kate Garmy and Chris Ellis. And they're really promoting it. And Right around the week of Thanksgiving, we will bring those, uh, the, we'll take a van or something and go down into Portland and, and give those uh, food, the, the food and goods to the parents. And it's, it's quite a remarkable experience to go there and see how they appreciate this. And I think for our kids to be in that giving mode and to see the response that these people have really is a, it's a great time of year to do that. And, and our students have come through very well. And uh, I look forward to that again this year. Um, also, I'd like to thank the parent, High School Parents Association for hosting a breakfast on November 5th. Uh, it was greatly appreciated by our faculty and staff. That's what I have. Questions? No, any questions? Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Uh, Pan Cove, Tom, you're up next. Good evening. I wanted to take a, a few moments to thank people who have done a few special things in the past month. Um, Sue Weatherby and the maintenance and custodial crews who got the schools open and running with the bottled water so we could resume studies. We really appreciated it. Um, Scott Poulin and the Department of Public Works again. I mentioned earlier this year I was really impressed with the appearance of the playground, but it, I had no idea that that uh, facelift would allow the playground area to absorb 15 to 20 inches of rain <laughs> with no mud holes and the kids were able to play out there uh, the next day. So thanks again. Uh, the teachers and parents who rearranged their schedules around parent conference uh, time because as you know they're scheduled before the official time and after and everybody got through that. 
And on a different subject, I've been emailing Jay Trevaro, thanking him for all the work he's done. I, I, he's not here tonight. He's probably over working in the lab again. But he has been tirelessly working in all three buildings, um, sometimes having to go back and redo work that's been done. And he's moved uh, the, at least the Pond Cove lab and probably the others up a few notches. In addition to that, he attended uh, Pond Cove faculty meeting to talk to everyone, got written feedback on teachers' needs and priorities. He's talked to team leaders. Uh, he's met teams in the lab during their um, planning time, and he's offered many courses around specific topics. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful to him, but I think you ought to take time off once in a while. He's done, done a great job. Um, our, we got some written feedback about the open house or curriculum presentations, as we call them at Pond Cove. The uh, feedback was very positive in most cases, but we got a few remarks directing our attention to the format at certain grade levels. The team leaders took a look at that written, fe written feedback and then shared it with the teams, and we'll use it when we uh, look at what we're going to do next year. Um, similar to previous years, the parent-teacher conferences enjoyed, uh, I think, almost 100% participation spread out over two weeks this year. Um, I haven't gotten formal feedback, but I understand that teachers were, as usual, well prepared. And this year, we were able to, I, I think, get to a new level with some of the concerns that come out of parent-teacher conferences. Uh, we have that student assistant, uh, assistance team that meets on a weekly basis to uh, provide kind of an institutional response to kids who are doing really well or some kids who might need some adjustment um, in their curriculum. And I appreciate the support that teachers have given to that. Uh, last month, the team leaders followed up on their commitment to learn more about uh, how to be a team and what decision making and communication is at Pond Cove. We went to Nobleboro with the day. We shared the uh, Camp Kiev facilities up there with uh, teams from around the state. By the end of the day, we were able to agree that the major um, challenge that the team is addressing is to define the role of the team leader, which is a uh, something we started to work on last year, how we communicate and how we make decisions. The benefits were for students, we decided, would be if we can pull this off and be more focused on teaching and learning and improve curriculum. We, this team perhaps would be able to model a more collaborative problem solving mode for other groups in the school and maybe in the district. And we might be able to manage ourselves, do a little risk taking at the same time. The professional benefits, we hope will be uh, to build trust in the building, make more efficient use of our time, follow up on our commitment to uh, shared inquiry, and uh, perhaps less stress on everybody. Um, goal number one was to communicate more about what we're doing. The um, staff is aware of uh, what our priorities are, and we will be coming up with a survey to get feedback from the staff next week about uh, how the faculty feels about the team roles and responsibilities. Once we've done that and sorted things out, we'd like to invite all of you or representatives to come and meet us and uh, talk over um, the team constitution and uh, team process sometime in probably February. And last, I, I hope Connie Goldman's watching tonight because um, you, um, last year you enjoyed a presentation by uh, Jim Carrey and probably always wonder what happens next. Last Thursday, we had the privilege of listening to uh, kindergarten teacher Ted DeMille, second grade teacher Sarah Lewis, third grade teacher Allison Hawks, fourth grade teacher Sue Welch, and library media center person, Shari Robinson, <laughs> who did the <laughs> coordinator, um, who reported to the, not only reported to the faculty, but gave everybody very practical ideas about how to integrate Jim's ideas with uh, research all the way from exploring monsters uh, in kindergarten level to doing probably more serious work on the fourth grade. Um, I was very impressed. I think the rest of the faculty was, and we hope you'll be able to see some of those results in the kids' work. Thank you, Tom. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Um, Nancy. Then we'll go back to Lyle. Yes. Thank you, and good evening. Um, I'd like to echo Tom's Thanks to several people, especially Jay Favaro right now, too, that we would have in common. I don't think Jay has had a weekend off since he started working with us, and he has been in our building, and I know that the middle school is 
moments away from being connected um, with email and we're all excited about that and look forward to our new communication network and much of the effort goes and thanks for that goes to tr to Jay he's really gotten in worked with problems worked through glitches today he joined us at our team leaders meeting and helped us begin to problem solve a method for figuring out our budget what we need to budget for computers what the system will budget and helping us also to think about the things we haven't even thought of yet because we haven't used computers as much as in the past so he's really doing a great job and we certainly are thankful to him for that our round of family conferences was also very successful and I also thank um, the parents and the teachers for rerouting their schedules with the flood um, to make sure that everyone got their conference in. They were very well attended and received mostly positive reports. On that same note, um, middle school parents should look for report cards on December 3rd. That's a Tuesday. It's a little bit of an odd day because of the Thanksgiving holiday. Our um, trimester actually ends on the 22nd, and then the report cards will be going home. We aren't having um, a December newsletter as such go out from the Middle School Parents Association, so on that report card, parents should look for a calendar update and a few other special notice announcements that will be attached to the report card so that we can um, continue with communication. A reminder that tomorrow night we have a math presentation. Um, it's gonna be focusing on the sixth grade program, but we invite anybody to attend. And we really are following up from the newsletter where we gave information on how we arrived at where we are with everyday math. And now some of the things we're working towards to be prepared for transition math and some of the advantages of the current program, some of our concerns and how we're gonna address those concerns. And we look forward to an opportunity to explain that to parents and also then to entertain questions and hopefully provide answers or promise to do the research to provide the answers if we're not able to answer them all right then. I'd like to thank the parents under Kathy Walsh's leadership who really engineered our Chewankee gift wrap sale for Chewankee um, that just finished and the students realized a profit of $13,200, which is a tremendous beginning to the money that they need to earn um, to go to Chewankee and people worked very hard on that. Kathy had a whole fleet of parent volunteers that helped her and they did a great job. Moving along with thanks, we also, during uh, family conferences, we had a software fair, and Beverly Bisbee really set this up and engineered it, and she had a wonderful time doing it. It was very time consuming, but we had lots of parents and students in there. Um, special recognition to one of our students, Mike Wacker, who several parents who had not met Michael before um, thought they might like to borrow him in their place of business because he was so helpful um, and so gracious. and didn't wait for people to come to him. He really went out and went to them. So I also thanked his parents very much for sharing him with us. He did a great job for us. And I think one of the, the best stories coming out of the software fair is that one of the students who was at the fair kept staying later and having to go use the phone to explain to his mother that he needed to stay a little bit longer. And Beverly overheard his final phone call was, Mom, I can't come home from dinner because I'm having, for dinner because I'm having so much fun. Could you bring my dinner to me? And the mother did. So um, I would say the software fair was a great success. And uh, we are beginning to learn more about all the possibilities that computers can give us for communication in many different kinds of ways, as well as programming. On October 28th, uh, Phil Jewett, Andy Strout, and I hosted a basketball meeting for girls basketball, as we had talked about at the last um, board meeting. That went very well, and we look forward to doing one in January for boys basketball, indoor track and swimming, and then we will do be a combined meeting for boys and girls sports for the spring. And that's just simply where we go over the rules and regulations, talk about any issues that we need to, specifically the one we addressed the other night, beyond what was on the sheet that might have needed a little further explanation is that if there were any issues on the buses going to a game, we would turn around and return and forfeit the game. If there's an issue on the bus returning from the game coming back, we would forfeit the next athletic contest. Um, that seems to be very clear to everyone. The coaches were there, the players have been informed. So we look forward to a very successful and uneventful, as far as bus rides are concerned, um, basketball season. And I think that's about where we are with the middle school. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Are there any questions? No? Thank you. And then Lyle and um, Sharon. In, in your packet, you had rather extensive testing information. Mm -hmm. And we didn't ask Sharon Merrill from the high school or Lyle Kramer from the middle school to do a presentation, but certainly they're here and available to answer any questions that you might have for them. Uh, questions from the board or reactions or anything? We've asked that the test results come to the board in November and 
to June, I think, two months for the board report. And certainly we don't expect an in-depth discussion of them, but to look at them and have any comments or where we want to go with them. Anne? Can, can I just make the suggestion that, um, that we have some opportunity maybe in the middle of the year, January, February, somewhere around then, to talk about this at the policy committee level. Um, we, we did that last year um, at, with great effect. This isn't really a very good um, forum to, to yeah, have I agree. a, uh, that was a really, good discussion on It was December. nice last year in January. We really looked at them in a very informal way and talked about them, and maybe that should be part of our calendar also. Um, I feel like the public needs to know that we do look at them and all at the public meetings, but that maybe we use some real working, a one working session at the policy committee. That would be great. Sharon and Lyle, if we could set that up maybe for January or something. Yeah. And with Gail. And with Gail. <laughs> we can work it in with what everybody's schedules are. Other comments or questions about the test scores? I'll make my yearly general comment that I just hope we use them, that we take all this time to give these tests and we pay a lot of money to give them. And I really hope that classroom teachers and grade level teams and subject matters really look at them and try to identify gaps and, um, and they're used to the best interest. They're certainly one tool of looking at a child's education and not that we should teach to the test or anything, but to use them as best we can. Charlie? One of the things I noticed in Sharon's uh, MEA score comparison, she compared, she compared um, probably equivalent uh, other schools, and I like that, and how they had changed from uh, in a three-year average, and I like that. What I've noticed in when I review the paper's presentation, the Cape Elizabeth is slipping, that yep. they aren't always at the top like they always were, and, it's, and you know, it, that's another aspect of looking at you know, how are we doing? You know, there are schools that are getting better. That doesn't mean we're doing any worse. Yes? Charlie, I just want to respond to that. That was a study that, that I had put together because what happens once the MEA results come out, the principals get on the phone, and one of the first places they call is Cape Elizabeth. And when our scores dip, the question is why? And, and so I've had discussion with members of, of, from Kenny Bunk High School, Greeley, and a few other few others and there's some real concerns and, and we had five of our uh, faculty along with Rick Madden from the middle school attended USM the partnership hosted a, a meeting last Friday to discuss the MEA results what they an interpretation of that and looking forward so there, there's been a lot of discussion about that in fact um, part of the the uh, principals um, meeting which is next uh, this weekend uh, Thursday and Friday we'll also be talking about the MEAs and all the learning results so it's it's a topic that when these scores come up, really raise some, some issues. The changing of scoring bands and why and, 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 and some of the testing results. And I hope some of the questions that Sharon raised in the report are, are questions that we raised at the high school. And I hope you as, as school board members would also see them as legitimate concerns in saying, you know, how the scoring is interpreted. Uh, to have five students who, who, who have scored fives in AP exam and, and are considered basic readers uh, on the main assessment, uh, we find some real discrepancies in, on, uh, on some of that interpretation. And uh, sometimes qua uh, quantity isn't always quality as far as response to the MEA and what they're looking for. So it's something we, and, and to respond with, the information goes back to department heads. We share samples of the uh, the various tests that are given, be it the CP3s or whatever, and especially MEAs, and, 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 uh, and have some, uh, some long discussions about that. So I want the board to be reassured. We look at that information and disseminate it and get it back and, and try to come up with some alternatives. I appreciated having the samples of the test and stuff mm -hmm. in there. Yes. It made Good. it seem much realer and what they were looking for and different things. Thank you. Um, Charlie? I still find the comprehensive testing program very hard to understand. Yeah. I really do. I don't know how you can make sense out of, out of those bands and scores. And when you get your child's, your own individual child's, it's like, you know, you look at how your school did and then you look at your child and you wonder how did we do as well or why are we doing as badly as we are. Yeah. I, I find that one a very hard one to, to evaluate. I don't know how, the, how you professionals do, but I find that a very difficult one.
And just one more thought. If um, those staff development days in January are going to be on K-12 curriculum, I would hope some of this testing would be used in, in that context to pinpoint areas where we need to work. Great. <clears throat> Other questions, comments? Otherwise, board members, hold on to this purple packet so no one has to <laughs> photocopy it all again, and we can use it in, at the policy meeting in January. Um, but just so that it doesn't have to be recopied. The middle has a yellow cover sheet. That's just yeah, the Yeah, I, I put it inside, the yellow, too. All right. File it all together. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is committee reports. Uh, Finance Committee, Charlie. Uh, the Finance Committee met at 6 o'clock this evening because we had a presentation by Maine State Billing Services, which is a service that started this year in doing Medicaid reimbursement for direct services. Um, we also looked at a differential mechanic pay, uh, looking at some of the duties that um, Mr. Freeman did before he left us and that the town was taking on, the town mechanic and and looking at the cost uh, that maybe we, we needed to stipend someone to, to do that position and save some money. Um, we re reviewed the photocopier award, uh, reviewed the appropriation report, looked at any overages at this point. Um, Scott introduced a budget instructions for account structure, which he sent out to all administrators for the upcoming budget process. We signed warrants. Um, On November 4th, I attended a town council workshop along with our business manager for the audit presentation by Runyon, Kirsten, and Olet. Uh, it actually is the best management letter that we've ever received. A lot of credit goes to Scott and his staff for, for taking care of uh, deficiencies over the past three years. Um, we also have an undesignated fund balance as of that audit of $274,647. Um, the, the areas that they found us to have a few problems with, um, again, segrega segrega segregation of duties, which is very hard when you have a small staff. Um, fixed assets, which we now have corrected with a fixed asset program and all our fixed assets in our, our, our school facilities are now on a program and can be updated as needed. Um, community services collection procedures were reviewed. Those have been correct, corrected or uh, different procedures established. And they also looked at, there were some questions about cash management. Um, they also had a full workshop. They also did a presentation of the town of Cape Elizabeth website by the Guy Gannett Communications Company, which helped us develop Cape's website. Um, it's a company um, that has been in existence for about two years under Guy Gannett, and this is actually the first community website that they've helped develop. Um, if you've seen pictures of it in the Cape Courier, um, it's been very impressive. There's a lot of work that went into it. Jay Trevero, uh, Mike McGovern were very involved in, in establishing that. And they also presented the Town of Cape Elizabeth technology plan and um, kind of goes hand in hand with what we've been doing because the Jay Shermer, the town librarian, Michael, uh, has been very involved in keeping in contact and, and attending our own meetings, our own um, uh, technology uh, coordinating meetings. Also on November 5th, um, both, ta both chairpersons of the town council and the school board and the chairpersons of the finance committees met with the town manager, the superintendent, and the business manager to kind of do a pre-budgetary meeting. Uh, this is kind of the third year we've done this to kind of uh, assess in a one-town concept, to get a sense of where we are. And the thing, areas that we kind of reviewed were facilities management, uh, short and long-term planning, and the town manager and the superintendent are going to look at that and come back with a more specific 
uh, proposal. Um, we looked at our fiscal conditions and, and where we will be as far as the tax rate and uh, what kind of income we will have coming in. Kind of briefly reviewed the pool study, which will be coming back to um, the town council and school board, I believe, in December with some kind of a proposal. Um, and we also looked at field preparation and management, um, some of those issues. Um, tentatively, I think there is going to be a town council school board workshop around January 7th. I don't know if that's... I think that's set. That's set, huh? Yeah. To kind of a pre-budgetary um, meeting and also to receive those reports. And that is it. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions? Next item is Technology Committee. I don't know if it's... Each. The Technology Committee met uh, October 15th. Uh, some of the major things being discussed are, are um, as mentioned by the principals, the state of, of hardware. And uh, I think the, the makeup and the direction of the Technology Committee is going to really begin to shift now that most of our infrastructure needs are getting close to being in place. Uh, the, the next logical step for the Technology Committee is going to be shift towards uh, curriculum issues and, and integrating the technology into the curriculum. Uh, there was a discussion about since we're going to be going that direction more than now that the uh, more than the hardware issues that are mostly revi uh, resolved now uh, that we need more faculty on that meeting or on that uh, committee uh, and that's certainly going to be the case. I think we're going to be asking more faculty to sit in and, and help us with the curricular issues. Uh, working on the acceptable use policy. Uh, I don't know if the policy committee has received anything yet from the technology committee. That's going to be tomorrow, uh, Thursday. Working on that this week, great. Don't steal uh, my thunder. Uh, that's all I'll say. <laughs> 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 and we're, and we're, and, uh, we're going to begin working on uh, adjusting the, the status of our f now fourth year of our five-year plan or third year of our five-year plan and uh, do the necessary adjustments and get ready for the budget area. Great. Thank you, Keith. Any questions? Next item is the Athletic Study Committee. And um, we met on Thursday, October 24th as a full committee and went over the work of the Philosophy Subcommittee and the Procedures Subcommittee and some work the Boosters Group had done. And all of that information will be going to a public workshop a week from tonight that is uh, I'm not sure what the exact date is, but whatever a week from tonight is, at 7 o'clock in the 19th, 7 o'clock in the cafetorium, and we encourage anyone who's interested at all to come. It should be very um, interesting. We have a number of um, proposals that the board is going to be reacting to, and um, I encourage you to come, and that committee is wrapping up its work. They have another meeting scheduled for Monday, December 2nd, I think, as a full committee, and then their work should be done. But please, anyone come next Tuesday night. Gail, Policy Subcommittee. We had our meeting on October 10th, and at that time, we um, our agreed to present for second readings this evening the graduation requirements and the requirements for early graduation. Tom and I presented the reading policy or we worked on the reading policy and that will be presented this evening for a first reading. Um, but I would like to read here that the first sentence of that policy uh, reads, reading is an essential component of all education and is the responsibility of every teacher. Um, and the rest of the paragraph follows that, that thought. We discussed the athletic rules and regulations, which are guidelines, and we have coordinated, or the committee has coordinated uh, the middle school and the high school policies. Those guidelines will be discussed this evening and hopefully adopted and then be brought to this athletic committee meeting next uh, Tuesday. Again, tonight for first reading will be the school board ethics, and Ann Chapman helped rewrite those in more current and appropriate language. Advertising in the schools is also going to be discussed this evening for a first draft. Um, 
And our next meeting will be this Thursday, November 14th at 7.45 a.m. And Jay Trevero will be um, starting off that meeting talking about appropriate use on the Internet and has a number of sample policies and he's written a draft of one that he feels would be appropriate for our, our schools. We've also been charged to have a policy in place come January on homeschooling for our district and uh, Cynthia will help us there. And, um, We've also received a policy from the state that we can use as a, a jumping off. And we've also been asked to have a policy on pets in the classroom. So those are the hot topics for next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gail. Um, the next item is the pool study committee. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's. Uh, we are meeting tomorrow at 3.30 in the chamber conference room and Harriman will be the, the association that is going to be doing our study will be giving us an update. It will, be not, it will not be a final proposal, but it will be um, an update for the committee. And I hesitate to commit to December, Charlie, since we're just getting an update in November. Um, so 3.30 in the conference room just to see where we are. Shall I continue? Research <laughs> and committee. Go ahead, yeah. All right. Um, I attended the research committee on October 29th. And at that time, as Tom has already um, touched upon, we discussed the presentations that the librarians would be working along with their faculty members to present to their whole faculty uh, good practices and uh, the direction of the research committee. Second, we also um, adopted a K-12 bibliography format that will be, that is in place now and my junior did receive it as the format that will be used for this junior research paper. Um, and it will be the one that will consistently be used throughout K through 12. And the last um, item was that we are in the process, or the librarians are in the process, of creating a bibliography of books that have been purchased by all the three schools for the K-12 research course that is ongoing. Thank you, Gail. The next item is the reading committee, which I went to this month. Um, the reading committee went over the reading policy as presented by the school board policy committee and um, approved it as, as it was presented with the proposed additional language that we will see tonight. Um, and then the rest of the discussion focused on where we went from there in terms of getting this information out to teachers. And we talked about the staff development dates in January that every um, K-12 uh, group would see a copy of this policy and they would react to it with a certain amount of time of how they would do this, what their concerns were, so that then the professional development could be put together to meet the needs of that policy. Uh, we set the next meeting for Wednesday, December 4th at 7.30 in the morning, middle school conference room. And the next committee is the Arts Committee. Uh, the Arts Committee met, uh, I guess it was about two weeks ago now. I don't have the exact date in front of me. Um, we we're trying to uh, put together, uh, finalize the, the plan, hoping to get some comments from the school board members on the, the draft plan. Uh, we are meeting tomorrow afternoon at 3.30 in the uh, middle school art room. Uh, to discuss uh, school board comments, if uh, some, some of you could get some of those over to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're also looking forward to uh, the proposed half-day arts curriculum work at the, after the first of the year, uh, and, and we're looking forward to setting up some specific goals and, and uh, means of achieving those goals for that, that day. Well, they will actually have a day and a half. Oh, really? Terrific. Yes. <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> um, the next item is the Staff Development Committee, which is where the day and a half is coming from. The Staff Development Committee is working on planning the two days, January 2nd and 3rd. Um, and at our first meeting, we discussed devoting a day and a half to every K-12 curriculum strand uh, there's seven of them, social studies, uh, language arts, and English together, history, whatever. And the arts would then get that same day and a half. During that time, they would 
be getting some kind of presentation from Jay Trevorrow about how to use technology in those subject matters. And he would be rotating around to the different groups during that day and a half. And then the last half day would be scheduled by the building to do work that they wanted to do um, individually, either taking back what they did over that day and a half or whatever work they wanted. And our next meeting, I don't know it's when next it is. Next Monday, the 18th, that's the 30th. With, um, a staff member has asked to be in charge of each of those subject groups, and we would be working with them on that day to plan it. There would be some kind of um, report coming out of each of those meetings. Any other questions? Then we're on to unfinished business. Policies, second reading. Okay. Dale? All right, um, we have two policies. They actually were one policy in our policy book and the policy committee decided to break them down to two graduation requirements, IKF and early graduation, IKFA. The graduation requirement policy that we are um, approving this evening reflects the 230 credits that had already been decided upon for high school graduation last year. Uh, six, cr six courses per semester lists the um, core curriculum that must be accomplished at Cape Elizabeth, and then took the two paragraphs, the ranking of the top 10 students in the graduating class will be based on seven semesters unweighted grades, and the designation of the valedictorian will take place after seven semesters. Um, they, those two sentences were pulled from the bottom of the early graduation from the original policy. So that, that's just change there. There's no change in the wording. The credit waiver also was part of our original policy and was just put with, early, with graduation rather than with early graduation. So um, do I make the motion? You can. All right, well then I move that we accept IKF graduation requirements and IKFA early graduation. Um, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Anne? Can I just ask that um, on the early graduation policy that we be consistent with early graduates either being capitalized or not capitalized? All the way through it, sometimes it's both words are capitalized, sometimes they're not. Okay. I don't think we really need to have them both capitalized, but if we could just do that clerical task. Any other comments? I just had one that I brought up at the last meeting on graduation requirements. If the United States history is part of social studies, so it's really three years of social studies that are required, mm -hmm. one would be the United States history, one would be the semester. Um, it doesn't probably need to be corrected, but it's, it would be cleaner, I think. I thought we we put the year uh, the one year of U.S. history isn't that a state requirement or so that was different than just we, we separated it since it was um, not just within our own system. Well, I just thought it would be in parentheses with the rest of our requirements at, under social studies. Fine point. <laughs> Any other corrections or changes? All those in favor. Seven zero. Okay, the second um, piece I'm putting forward to this evening is a guideline, the um, Athletic Rules and Regulation Guideline, which is the yellow sheet. This is a combination of the middle school and the high school uh, guidelines for their athletic programs uh, so that from fifth grade on, the students will be um, familiar with this one form. Uh, this, this does not have to have a second reading. It can be approved this evening. So does anyone have any comment? We have a typo on 15. It should say freshmen, plural, very last sentence. Yeah. Okay. And I, I thought also on 18, the third line where it says um, possession of tobacco in any form, comma, or use. Or use. Have in possession. It, they were in the wrong order. Do you understand what I was trying to say? Is that use or being in possession of tobacco? Yeah. Oh, I think the use, second use goes with marijuana. It doesn't go with tobacco. Yeah. yeah. There should be semicolon. Semicolon, right. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
some other things. Yeah, there seems to be a number of um, <laughs> grammatical issues with it that we could perhaps hand off our, our copies. There are some misspellings and so on. So can we approve the content? Yeah. Can, and then, but one clarification, at, at the top it, it refers to athletic rules and still in 18 it refers to plays and rehearsals and that kind of thing. So is this really still athletic and co-curricular? During the season of practice, play, or rehearsal. So delete or rehearsal. That refers to not yeah. play rehearsal, yeah. but rehearsal. Well, but that would be practice in practice. sports. Yeah. So just During the season of practice or practice. play, a student shall not. Yeah. It's a, just a different term. OK, are we going to have something like this for co-curricular or no? I think we should, but I think we should come up with a pulling a out the one. clean okay. ones that we need. Any other questions, comments? Do we have cheerleaders? And I just didn't know it. No, but we left it in we there. We had drummers. Just in case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just in case. So this doesn't need, this needs consensus. It doesn't need a vote. I think it does need a vote, doesn't it? It doesn't need two readings. It needs no, one. That's right. but it needs a vote. So would you like to make a motion? Um, I move that we accept the Cape Elizabeth School Department athletic rules and regulations for middle school and high school students. Um, to be corrected for spelling and grammar. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Anne? Does this have a, an actual file number? Or should it have an actual file number? I think it we should check that. It was in there before. Yeah. Um, so we are replacing what is in there with this. I didn't type it. I had nothing to right. do with <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah, I think we need to just check and if there file is a number. file number. Um, okay. You know, from the state, I oh, wish stick it on there. All those in favor? Seven zero. Next item on the agenda is the parent survey finalization of form. This was discussed last month, and Nancy talked to me before the meeting to say we're not going to accept the form tonight in exact detail. The board has made some changes to it also, but we'd like to hear the feedback you have, but we're ready to move on the process and the timeline and those kind of things. But Nancy did talk to me that she had asked for feedback from her staff that wasn't due till today, I think, so that we wanted to, to get that. Um, but we had some input from the board on the form that um, we can talk about, and there are obviously a lot of teachers here that might want to speak to it. I guess to uh, just give a little background on it, um, some kind of feedback on the program students were getting was promised to teachers, I mean to parents, three years ago. And it has taken three years for us to come up with any kind of uh, vehicle to do this. And it is specifically to, for parents to give input on the program that their um, student is getting for that year. And uh, Nancy and I sat down and came up with this form, I think, in end of August or beginning of September. And we used a couple of different um, samples to come up with this. We wanted something real easy to tabulate at the top. And again, some open-ended things at the bottom. Felt strongly that administration should also get some feedback if um, the teachers and the programs that they were presenting was getting feedback. Um, it is something parents have asked for continually. It is not intended to be used to evaluate teachers. It is used to, in the spirit of continual improvement to the program. So with that, if somebody would like to speak from the audience or from the board, um, there are obviously people here. And Beth, I think it would be helpful if we just read you know, basically what these questions look like right now, so sure. people have an idea. Yeah. Um, and I'd be happy to just read off mine, including a couple of the things that we talked about Changing. tonight. Sure. Um, it's just Cape Elizabeth Schools questionnaire, K-12. It has room for grade, has room for the teacher or homeroom teacher, and we added in tonight a space for a name. Meaning uh, the, the parent's person name who's filling it out, which would be optional. Out, right. Then there's a, uh, <clears throat> a series of two, two areas here with columns. 
um, to check whether you're very satisfied, generally satisfied. On here it had somewhat or sometimes satisfied, which tonight we um, suggested we change to not satisfied since generally and somewhat are kind of the same and this doesn't give anybody an opportunity to say they're not satisfied. And also calling for no basis for judgment and there are a series of questions about uh, the specific teacher and program. Um, one, knowledge and understanding of the subject. Two, communication with parents. Three, development of sound and carefully planned assignments and projects. Four, understanding and rapport with students. Five, emphasis placed on student knowledge acquisition. Six, consistency with curriculum overviews and procedural guidelines, and we kind of agreed that that wording needed to be worked on to indicate more consistency with grade level curriculum. Um, and seven, recognition of the strengths of individual learners. Then under administration, there are four, support of the program, communication with parents, knowledge of student needs, and appropriate response to disciplinary concerns. Then under that, um, there's grade level subject questions. Uh, the first one is please list up to five strengths of the program in your opinion. Please list up to five recommendations for the program. And how would you evaluate the overall program? Excellent, good, fair, or poor? And then um, some space for additional comments. So that's the type of feedback we're looking for. The emphasis was to keep it on one page. We also discussed that this should probably be returned to the superintendent's office and then gotten out to the buildings from there. But there's certainly, yeah, Clark? Uh, you gotta come up here. Our... Yeah, you can come up here. Thank you. Um, we forwarded to you folks this morning a letter from the association because we feel very strongly about this issue. And um, we're more than happy to work with the board and administrators in developing a, a survey or questionnaire if that's what you wish to do. However, uh, the input from us was not requested until after the survey was was drafted by you folks. Um, we'd like to have more input. I think um, the letter that we offer to you folks today really sums it up. It's a very, very important issue to us. Um, every staff in all three buildings gave the executive board the input that went into that letter. So please. Why don't you summarize some of the points in there for the public who's watching, some of the concerns. Well, I think some of the concerns is um, we were very worried about the validity of a, of a questionnaire that wasn't signed by anyone. We were very worried about um, how this would be used. Was it going to deal with curricular issues or was it going to deal with specific teacher issues? We were very worried about who the people would be who would be making judgments about things that are done within the profession without any background on their own. I'd be happy to read the letter to you or to the people on the airways, but that wasn't our intent. Um, it's critical that um, the community and the board and the administration and the teachers work together to develop this questionnaire. Uh, we know that a similar community, Cumberland and North Yarmouth, used a questionnaire, but it was developed by the University of Maine it was done through a special testing process. We reviewed that. It's considerably different than this questionnaire. We know that even that one that went out, um, the amount of response has been minimal. Uh, we also know that oftentimes uh, the responses tend to be the ones that we get back or people get back tend to be the negative ones, not the positive ones. Um, we'd like input. We'd like to be very involved. Um, I'm sure that I could give you a list of names of people who would be involved in this instantaneously. Well, I think we're definitely interested in input, and I can say that we did look over um, that Cumberland North Yarmouth one, and it was about 10 pages long, and it dealt with sort of the whole school issue about you know lots of different things, and we wanted to be as specific as possible. 
and they did have a very poor return rate, even though they did hire consultants and all to do it. Um, and certainly we will listen to your input. I think what we'd like to do is be sure that this is done and ready to go out in the spring. We're talking April, May, and possibly a cover letter can go with it and explain to parents what it is and who is doing it. Those are valid points to bring up. We're not finding fault with the idea of having a questionnaire. Okay. Our letter, I think, sums up where we think the strengths should be in it and uh, some of the places it could be forged up a little bit. Did, oh, Anne. Clark, would you mind reading your letter just so people can have heard the questionnaire questions and then <clears throat> hear what your position is? <clears throat> we are writing in response to a draft of the Cape Elizabeth Schools Questionnaire K-12. We are always interested in participating in the ongoing process of achieving consistency of programming and the exploring assessment and in exploring assessment and evaluation models. No cover, out, cover letter was outlined the purpose of the focus of the questionnaire and the direction of your intent. Therefore, it's not possible for us to offer specific suggestions. We're very disappointed that the community, staff, and full administration were not involved in what appears to be an attempt to critique the strengths and concerns of each school in our district. A format that would encourage us to work together in a professional and supportive manner to make adjustments in the educational process should be global in nature and coupled with procedures to affect positive change. In your draft, the bottom section does offer respondents an opportunity to discuss strengths and recommendations for programs. We see that approach combined with a signature for further dialogue as responsible and consistent with our efforts to encourage open and honest communication. Asking people who may not have specific knowledge of questions, who may have a singular perspective of our curriculum, or who may rely on hearsay from untrained observers greatly weakens the validity of your document. In the first section, asking citizens to judge a teacher's, quote, development of sound and carefully planned assignment projects, quote, for example, implies an intimate knowledge of the teaching process understood only by another trained professional. Such critical questions are more appropriate within the context of the evaluation process already in place in our system. We support the concept of a community of learners sharing common goals toward which we work together, and we recognize the need for qualitative communication. A format that allows for some consensus between all groups should be part of the process of effectively using a questionnaire. We encourage you to be more forthcoming in your intent to include the community within our schools as you work on this project, and to join us in striving for a respectful, reflective, and trusting climate in which we can all flourish. Sincerely, myself, head of the association. Thank you. Questions? I would just like to make um, a couple comments. My reading of this, and just tell me if I'm wrong, is that um, you're basically saying that parents don't have the training to make an observation about the homework or the projects that their kids um, are doing and that they're seeing at home. And I don't think that's the impression you want to leave with the parents of Cape Elizabeth, that they don't have any valuable feedback to give the teachers. I'm that is certain that isn't what you meant. That's clear. It's not what we meant. Well, it's we said not We would clear. like to have input and help design this questionnaire. And we were not asked for that input. But you say we said the first that this questionnaire to be valid needs to be signed by a person, not just to be I, brought in and Clark, used. Could you just respond to the point that I made? Yes, ma'am. And that is, it says, asking citizens to judge a teacher's development of sound and carefully planned assignments and projects, for example, implies an intimate knowledge of the teaching process understood by another trained professional. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean to say that parents? 
can't we have any valid they have opinion on that. Knowledge of how we run our classrooms. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I was clear. And I'd also mm -hmm. like to say, as someone who's been on the board for five and a half years now, that we could not be more forthcoming about our intent, and that is to give parents and taxpayers in this community who elect us and employ you an opportunity to give legitimate feedback in a legitimate way to this system. I think the teachers and all of us will be well served by us giving them that opportunity. We all complain about the rumor mill, yet we have done precious little to make sure that we give people a legitimate way to do this. I think this is a responsible start and your input is certainly important, but to impugn either our motives or parents' ability to have input on um, their children's teachers, I think, is unfortunate. Um, well, I, I think you hit the nail right on the head when you said we need to have it legitimately done. And that's why we'd like to be part of the process. And we'd like the community to be part of the process so that we know that this questionnaire going out will seek answers to what this community wants. And if we're part of that process and we work through it, when that questionnaire goes out, it'll be a fine document that will answer the questions that the community is looking for and answer the questions that teachers may need for support from this community and answer the questions that you, the board members, may like. My understanding was, Clark, though, that the teachers should have been aware that this was being developed. It was certainly discussed in August. Nancy and I sat down either at the end of August, beginning of September. I know you brought it to your team leaders and then was going out to everyone. This was certainly discussed at our last board meeting. Um, it, it has been no secret. There has been no intent to pull anything behind anybody's back. It was always as part of the work for the year. How, how was it distributed in the different buildings? I mean, you can just say mailbox or faculty meeting. Or we, we distributed in the middle school, and I, I'll let Rick and Tom speak for themselves, but we just used our team leader network to hand it out about, I can't remember, it was two or three weeks ago, and then took it to the team so that the teams could meet and talk about it, and then the feedback was due back today, which we do have written comments, which um, mirror some of what Clark has spoken about, the intent that getting feedback is fine. They would like to be part of a process um, to refine the format and concerned about some of the questions. Other things that haven't been mentioned um, that have come up through that process that I think are, are good and things that we learned certainly when we looked at the Cumberland North Yarmouth one um, is that, for instance, when you get to high school and middle school, if you filled out one of these for every single teacher, for every single course that you took, we might not get a high return rate. Is there a way that we can combine it to look at the fifth grade year, the seventh grade year, something like that? And I, I think there are many suggestions of that caliber that are worth investigation by a committee of all the interested parties. I just don't want to mask the knowledge we get back. I mean, if we want to use it, I know for my children who are in team teaching situations, you need to evaluate them separately. They have a different program in each room. Just to finally um, mention that uh, Nancy was very truthful about when we saw it, about two weeks ago. However, the high school people informed me today that they only saw it um, just three or four days ago. So that's the first that they were aware of that particular situation. So um, as far as this faculty is concerned, that has not been uh, an object that we've had a long time to look over to give any input to and so on and so forth. If it had been, I'm sure you would have heard from us sooner than today. Um, I was asked by my administrator, or we were in the middle school, to give our responses by today. So the association felt that we had to give our responses by today, and that's why we have moved in such a way. Um, we certainly stand by the, the, uh, the document that we've given you. Um, a lot of people work very hard on that, and it is the feelings of the faculty. Are there other comments from faculty here, or Kathleen? Oh, no, parent, go ahead. Doesn't matter. I think you have to state your name. Okay, hi, I'm Kathleen Kent, 74 Wells Road. And I just want to comment briefly, I hadn't really planned to, but um, 
from the point of view of sort of a taxpayer and a parent, and I encourage the board to pursue this. I'm glad to see the board is doing it. And while I may not be a trained professional, I can see what my child is learning and not learning, and I can see strengths and weaknesses in the program, and it would be very helpful to be able to express that in a consistent manner. And I think it might help, and the teachers might find it useful, to get some kind of feedback on an ongoing basis that you can turn, use in terms of evaluation of your programs and sort of stop what I see as somewhat adversarial situation where when I talk to teachers with my complaints, it can sometimes cause some defensiveness on both parts. And I'd like to see this open communication and make things simpler, more straightforward, and get discussion going in a positive way. So I encourage the format. I certainly don't want to see teachers excluded, but I'd encourage more getting the system set up, getting it going. And the first year results may not be as good as what you can anticipate in future years, but if you can at least get something started this year and then progress based on what you learn on these results. So I, I appreciate the fact that the board's doing this and hope it continues. Thank you. Are there other comments? Yeah. Hi, I'm Barbara Powers, fourth grade teacher. Um, I just wanted to clarify something, and I am um, listening to Clark try to explain our reaction to getting feedback from parents, and certainly that's nothing we ever fear or would choose to not welcome. I think that um, a piece of the language that disturbed us somewhat, which we would very much like to sit down and rework with you, um, was in the first section where parents are being asked to comment on our instructional uh, tasks and strategies with our full classroom. Um, we would never say that a parent wouldn't have a very strong and able perspective on their own child's experience, but the way the language is written, um, it sounds like they're commenting more from an evaluative standpoint as our administrator might in terms of how we would be dealing with 22 or 23 children. So I think that in the first reading of the questionnaire, one of the things if you could perhaps keep in mind um, as we try to work through this together is we would really like this to focus on a parent's individual sense of their child's success or progress or whatever concerns happening in a classroom and not make it sound as if they're evaluating a teacher's ability to work with 23 very different children. Just one thing I wanted to clarify. Other comments? Yeah. I'm Pam Vos, the social worker in Ponco School. And last Tuesday night was so much fun, I came back again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I probably have a somewhat different tack on this. I think. There is tremendous value in this parental input, and I think there can be a good um, way to gather that. And I know that Sarah Berman and I, when we do parent workshops, actually do have parents evaluate the workshop and have gotten some very valuable information from that. So I think, as other people have said, I think this is a, an idea that, that clearly has tremendous value. My one concern, and I think perhaps it's beginning to be addressed, is what I um, witnessed really was that people, because they really weren't clear about the purpose of this initiative, um, really I think found it somewhat distracting and even stressful. And so I would really emphasize that um, even a really well-intentioned initiative can have unintended consequences. And I think that if, um, initiatives like this can be accompanied with a really clear sense of what the purpose of them is, um, they will be met with less um, of a sense of stress. And I know from having um, listened before that the board really does have a strong conviction about the work of the school being teaching and learning. And my observation is that people really need to come to that work energetic and focused and committed and I think we just need to be careful that a well-intended initiative doesn't in any way detract from their ability to do that because they really are distracted or um, stressed by not knowing the purpose of what that initiative is. Thank you. Other questions or comments? 
from the public? I'm sorry the purpose wasn't articulated more clearly either by us or the administrators in the building. It's something we have certainly been talking about for about two years now to really um, get this done. And the purpose has always been continual improvement and um, a way for parents who've been just begging for this to be able to give some feedback on their child's program. Anne? Can I just make one suggestion? And um, I've said this in other uh, forums. I think it would be really helpful if teachers would come to board meetings. You don't always have to be the same one come to, coming to every board meeting. But we hear this so many times, even though we have so many vehicles of communication, that, well, we didn't know about this, we didn't understand this, we didn't. Maybe it would be really a good idea if somebody from the association would come to our board meetings, come to our budget workshops, so that we don't get this continuous problem of people saying they didn't know, they didn't understand um, what we've been talking about. And certainly on this issue, we've been talking about it for many, many years. And um, I, you know, I think you should seriously consider doing that and having somebody who can report back through the association or through each school. Um, because apparently I, I know that the administrators try to get the information back, but um, something, something's getting lost in the loop. So. I think it might behoove you to um, make the effort to come here or watch it on TV um, so you have a clearer understanding of what we're doing. Priscilla. Um, I would also like to say when, and I can't remember exactly the dates, but whether it was in our August or our September board meetings when we discussed the, the school board's goals for the year, um, program evaluation was very clearly articulated and that we're really trying to look at it um, both as a way of, of parents being able to evaluate the program as well as building ways I think for administrators and teachers to be able to be reflective about how the year went for them and where it could have been better and where it really succeeded and that overall, I think that, that we will find out really wonderful things about our school system and not to be afraid of the, the less positive aspects that we might find. I think evaluation is a, um, a tough and scary uh, process when you're, before you get into it. And um, generally, I think once you're into it, you find that, um, that we will all find that we will learn a tremendous amount from it and that it will only be good for everybody. Well, at this point, um, we wanted to go ahead and recommend that the process continue with the goal being that a questionnaire would be sent out in the spring of this year. We had talked, and again, these details are up for um, discussion, that possibly it would go out with the third trimester report card or at some appropriate time when parents would get it, it wouldn't go home in the backpacks, that kind of thing. There would be a cover letter, it would be clear where it was returned to and the purpose of it, and that we can fine tune the language. Um, but, but I think we should follow up with the um, suggestion by the association that that committee may be expanded by one member of that they would select a faculty Great. member that would work with Nancy and yourself so that they would have a little bit more um, understanding and, and maybe help with the cover letter, the format of the cover letter that would go out with this. Um, I also, um, I, I think <coughs> we, we've discussed these items on teacher program section and I like the suggestion that we vo uh, focus on the individual student or specific specify that somewhere that it is an individual student we're talking about and that experience and I do think number three the development of sound and carefully planned assignment projects could be put more simply to be projects and homework or how you view or something that would be more appropriate to a parent's view that, that does sound lofty so I, I think we can discuss those things. <laughs> I think a faculty member on that yes. committee, um, however you, it would be chosen, um, and the next draft 
that would be reviewed needs to be um, addressed by the administrators in a more specific way that everybody knows it's coming and what's happening with it so that we don't get um, caught here thinking that we're trying to pull something over on the faculty or that we just build on more distrust or lack of communications. This is unfortunate. Nancy? Just a suggestion on the um, committee too. I think it's um, a great idea to expand it to, to teachers. I, I'd make the committee larger than three though. I, I think that we have um, perhaps some different kinds of issues that we want to be sure we encompass and still come out with something that's K-12. I know that Rick and Tom and I have talked, and I know both Rick and Tom are willing to be on the committee as well as myself, and I would just encourage not to have the biggest committee in the world, but I think we need to be sure we have broad representation from all of the schools and all of the interest areas, as well as perhaps someone else from the board would like to join us, and then maybe a faculty member from each one of the schools. But um, I just don't want to see it to become a huge, long, drawn-out process to come up with a questionnaire that we plan to revise at the end of each year when we see how we use the feedback and what the feedback is. It was attempted to be a first try to get information, and we could spend hours inventing every word on it, but I think um, it doesn't have to be that fine. We can expand the committee, but I think it can probably be done in one meeting. I think we should put an endpoint that this will go out in the third trimester or whatever the point is we decide, and it has to be done by then. Speaking of wording, you, you probably don't want to send it out in the third trimester, well, so whenever. that would be the end. It, this spring, Maybe it the second trimester, out. third quarter kind of shot. Yeah. Can, can, can we have an end date of when this committee is, is going to end, and can we also make it clear that this is, a, you know, a, ultimately a board decision about what, the, it's great to get lots of in, input, but ultimately, we need to decide um, and be comfortable with the wording. Um, this is not supposed to be, I don't think, a, vic a, a document of total consensus by every single person. Like you said, it is a trial balloon um, to get general information, not, not a witch hunt, nothing like that. And, you know, I think we can belabor this a little too much. We have feedback so, now, don't we? We're ready to write a second draft. Well, I'm not sure. Does all, do all the buildings have feedback in? Tom and Rick and I, Nancy's due today, but. Um, yes, I got some written feedback and uh, I attended a few regular teams and we discussed the I am guilty as Clark said. It was more than three days ago though, Clark. Um, I think it was about five. Um, but we are meeting Monday. With I, when I sent out a memo to the faculty, I've been getting individual feedback. We have a faculty meeting Monday. So I will be getting faculty meet, feedback Monday and I was going to present that to the, uh, to the board and the committee so that to go from there. And I, my apologies. Why don't we schedule a meeting with the three administrators, um, a board rep and a teacher rep and at least oh, try to fine. get it, all the wording done in one meeting, which will then come back to the board for the finalized form. When? Before the next board, the December board meeting? Sure. You know, I, I realized that this was something that was going to be done by the end of the year, and, and we had talked yeah. about an administrative, we even had talked about an administrative council beyond the realm of the board, but I didn't realize that, that when that form came out as we were going to be voting on it, I think uh, the three administrators sort of panicked. I hope I could speak for Tom and Nancy to say, wow, that. we didn't re realize we were right there. So, okay, thank you. Well, it's hot on people's minds, so we might as well go well, ahead and agenda, do it. On the agenda for December 10th? Sure. And we'll, after this, we can set up a meeting time. Okay. Um, any other comments? No. So we're not going to vote on anything in terms of the form, but the intent is to have this done and going out in April or May with cover letter and cleaned up language. Next item is new business policies, first reading. Yeah. Um, I have three policies for um, first reading. The first policy is IHAA, the Cape Elizabeth School Policy on Reading Instruction. And since it is short, I'd like to read this um, 
Reading is an essential component of all education and is the responsibility of every teacher. Recognizing the importance of reading instruction at all grade levels and in all content areas, the Cape Elizabeth School Board will maintain a K-12 reading program of the highest quality. To accomplish this goal, the elementary, middle, and high schools will jointly develop content standards and performance indicators that meet or exceed state requirements and national guidelines in reading. Cape Elizabeth schools will regularly assess students' reading performance so as to modify instruction and report individual and group progress to parents and the community. The school board, in collaboration with the teachers and the administrators, will provide the resources to support a successful reading program. All teachers will participate in ongoing professional growth and development opportunities relating to reading instruction. Second one. Oh, well, comments? Should we do comments on that one first? Any comments? Changes that Gail should work on? The reading committee did like that proposed addition at the bottom also. All right. If this is um, agreed upon, it will come before us next month for second reading, but the reading committee um, will then move forward on working on those uh, standards and performance indicators. They, they feel they've done much of the work already. The second before you is KHB, Advertising in the Schools. And this, um, I, w I won't read this, but this says that we are discouraging advertising in the schools. However, with the board approval for co-sponsorship of um, athletics and co-curricular activities, we would consider proposals that come before us. But it would be um, with written consent from the school board through the uh, principals or the athletics. Department. It's kind of both ways, <laughs> policy. <laughs> and the last policy is BBF, the School Board Code of Ethics, um, rewritten by Ann. That um, the new policy was sent to your houses. I hope you received that with the correction that it was according to the Cape Elizabeth Town Charter. Any comments on this one? Oh, come on. Somebody must have a comment on this. <laughs> did a good job, Ann. You yeah, did a good job, Ann. All right. And I like that you put the kids' second statement. There you go. All right. And the next item is consideration of the superintendent's nomination for a teaching position. Yes, we have a vacancy in our special education department at the middle school with some time spent at Pond Cove. I wish to nominate Karen Rand to that position. She has an undergraduate degree from Colby College and a master's degree in education from the College of St. Rose. Her professional experience has been in Vermont and we're very optimistic about what she can add to our special education program. And? Can I just ask, how is the time divided exactly between the two schools? The majority of the time is at the middle school. There's about an hour in the morning. I, it's roughly something like from, um, let's see, 8.45 to 9.45, she's at Pond Cove, and the rest of the time she's at the middle school. And this is a one-year position. This, yeah. this is a one-year position. When we interviewed, and um, totally. Claire Labrie was here to do the interviews with us, as well um, as Tammy Stanley and myself, and we emphasized with all the candidates that we interviewed that this was a position we were filling for this year, that we weren't sure what our special education needs would be for upcoming years. So should we be stating that, though? In the, Sorry? Should we be stating that in the motion, that it's a one-year position? You, you may, but it's legally fine without okay. <laughs> If you feel more comfortable, you may. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Can I move? Yeah. Can I move we approve the uh, superintendent's nomination of Karen Rand for a one-year position um, in special education, middle school, elementary? Middle school and elementary. And elementary, OK. Is there a second? Priscilla? Second. Any other discussion? Um, just when we say one year position, we need mean finishing this yes, year. Yes, she will be with us for this year. That's Not correct. one full year. No. Okay. Um, all those in favor? 7 0. 
Next item is um, superintendent's nomination for athletic fee positions. Yes, I have several winter coaching positions. Harvey Wheeler for diving. Deborah Finnegan for eighth grade basketball. Sarah Randall for seventh grade basketball. Jerry McQueenie for eighth grade basketball. And Creed Ray the fourth for seventh boys, seventh grade boys basketball. Any questions? I have one. Are they all filled now, the winter positions? Do we know? I don't know the answer there's, to that. There's one other one for uh, a B team girls basketball at the middle school, which they have a, a person to nominate, but they didn't get the nomination to me until today, so I told them I have to wait until the December board. Is that a problem? When does the girls basketball start? Isn't that? It started. It started? Mm -hmm. Girls basketball began October 28th. So are we short a coach or we have somebody working who's not approved? I believe um, in talking with Andy, he said they had, he and Keith were nominating someone. I was led to believe it was going to be in tonight's packet. And I'm sorry, I, I know the person's name and it's absolutely escaping me who it is. So I, I know I'm what not sure it is. It's Wayne. It is someone who has worked with our high school program, I believe. Um, but they did the interviewing and I really anticipated that it would be in your packet. So because uh, he has begun work with them. I, believe. I didn't get it until the inter-office mail today. Well, maybe at the athletic um, Me. meeting next Tuesday, we could have a quick special. I, I think they would both be there, and they can both answer any questions that you have about this person, I'm sure. Do, do we have a problem with having coaches starting before they're approved? Wayne Bridgham, that's his name. Well, we don't I mean, have do, aren't we creating a problem for ourselves if we have people starting a job they haven't been approved for yet? Has this person started? Yeah. 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 I, I only stand before you as the middle school principal. I'm not in charge of middle school <laughs> athletics. Um, and I think those are good questions for um, Andy and Keith. And I think there has been a process here before that they have followed. We have had continuing difficulty with getting people's name in a timely fashion. Some of that is because people don't apply, but I know that this person, it was, this person didn't start the first week with them, so it really was starting last week is the person's first week, and um, it was my understanding that we would have the name tonight, so really that's, that's the information that I have. I'm sorry, it's rather incomplete. Charlie? It is, it is very hard to get a process in place here, and when we set a process in place, it's hard for, for administrators to follow that process. And if, if, a, if a recommendation for a position cannot arrive before the packet arrives, which, I mean, even that's been set in place because things were arriving and allowing the school board package to go out late. So we now have a process where everything has to be in by a certain date. You, have no, you do not have time when a nomination arrives on this diocese the night of the meeting to evaluate or ask questions, and I don't know how to get the message out. I, I think it's a frustration of the board. I, I, I would just say in, that don't I shoot the message and answer. That, yeah, no, I'm, I know. I know. Um, it's okay. I have my bulletproof vest on. It's all right. Um, I know that the person interviewed for the job last week, and the job was open and posted, and it is a continual problem that we had. We had this in the fall sports, too, where people don't apply for the positions. They try to interview them in a timely fashion so that I know it was not ready for the <coughs> Tuesday deadline. I know that. Um, I believe, if I recall correctly, correctly, Andy and I spoke on Thursday, and my understanding was that something was going to go out immediately. Um, obviously, I had the wrong understanding. Um, but we do have a B team. It is never established until after the first week of practice, so it really was last week that they began establishing the B team. And a similar process will occur, I want to warn you, will occur when we do boys basketball as well. We, we, I think we understand the difficulty in finding people for some of these positions, but there was still some time there. If we had gotten it last week, we still could have gotten it to the board before tonight's meeting. So we need to speak to Keith and Andy, obviously, again. And I think what is a frustration is almost monthly, we have athletic positions coming before this board. We have a part-time athletic director and two assistants. And I think one of those people should be here at this board meeting to answer any questions. I don't think it is your role as an administrator 
to answer athletic. I, I can understand sometimes co-curricular because you have a little more understanding. But we have someone who is responsible for those nominations, and that person or a designee of his should be here to answer any questions. Any I don't know how many times we have to say these things. <laughs> but I, I don't understand how we can have people working for us who we haven't approved. I think we're setting ourselves up for a problem e either with students or with you know, the person's understanding of their employment. Clearly, they shouldn't be paid until they're approved. I mean, right. well, they I, want to volunteer. I'd like to follow. But he, I'm sure he will expect to be paid for the work that he's doing, and we've, we've got to get this under control. We'll go back and speak to Andy and Keith. I, I think Andy and Keith might be able to give you some more information about the process. Well, if they were here, they could. Well, can I speak to that point? A little frustration that the big awards for the full soccer program was scheduled on the very night of a board night so that. Andy and Keith probably are at the sports awards, and, and the conflict there is frustrating, especially since I have someone involved. But this is, this is a one-time situation. There are other times when we've had frustration about asking questions, and no one is here to give the appropriate answer. And if that recommendation is coming forth from the athletic director or his assistants, then he needs to make sure that one of them is here for a board meeting. Deadline for next month is December 3rd. I think one of the one of the problems with the B team is they're not sure whether they'll need it or not until all the people try out. And if there is an overabundance of, of players, then they have the B team. So they don't know when they first advertise for the coaches whether or not they'll need a B team coach. Isn't that right? But tonight, the very person we're speaking about has already started. I mean, that name should have been available even in the letter that we received today with the corrections on the other few items. That's, I, I think that that might have been a, an exceptional incident because of all the, the championship games going on last week and so forth. I think it probably, it may have gotten lost mm -hmm. in the shuffle. I don't know. I, think I received okay. it today. I think some of these issues will, will be worked out when the Athletic Study Committee comes forth with their proposals. Sue, did you want to? need to be. Did you want to say anything? Yeah, I think one of the difficulties was in this particular instance was that once they found out the numbers So if somebody from the assistant or the director were here tonight, all these other comments would have just been taken care of. Anyway, well, the slate hmm. presented. Would someone like to make a motion on that? Thank I'd, you, George. I'd make a motion that uh, we accept the superintendent's nominations for winter coaching positions. Uh, do I need to read the names? Just as presented. Um, as presented. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. We have 10 D, uh, an additional. Yep. One co-curricular position, Barbara Kelly for theater assistant. That's a 115-hour position. Any questions? I would just note that it says our services are needed now and board approval is necessary before a contract can be issued. That's true. Now we seem to get the message. Um, Co curricula. Is there a motion? Charlie or Priscilla? I move the acceptance of the Barbara Kelly's theater assistant. Second. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? 7 0. Uh, the next item, um, well, actually, I'm going to announce the next meetings. We have next Tuesday night is the athletic study group reporting out in a school board workshop.
The next school board meeting is Tuesday, December 10th. 6.30 is the Finance Committee meeting and 7.30 the regular board meeting. Information for that meeting <laughs> is due on the 3rd again. That's right. There's a policy um, subcommittee meeting this Thursday morning at 7.45. And uh, I'm not going to read all the other committees. Oh, the inhalants, the Cape Coalition meeting on inhalants on Thursday, December 5th. Encourage everyone to come. Other than that, I would need a motion that we go into executive session. So move. So seconded. <laughs> All those in favor? 7 0. Meeting is adjourned. Yes, that's yours. <laughs>